This proof has a bit more complexity. We're still just using arrow out, ampersand out, and ampersand in, but this time we'll get to have a little bit more fun. We start at the top as always. Main connective is clearly this last arrow, and we know if we know the main connective, everything in front of it is P. That entire chunk is P. And then W by itself is Q. So we say the script. If I can find R arrow S ampersand T all together on a line by itself, then I can write W. And I take a look. Do I have R arrow S and T on, together on a line someplace? And I do not. But I also notice the main connective of this formula is the ampersand. So if I had R arrow S on another line by itself and T on a, an additional line by itself, I could con create this using ampersand in. At the moment, I don't have either RROS or T by itself. Now you might notice that they're there. There's the RROS, there's the T. Eventually they're going to show up, but they don't exist right now, so there's no reason to overthink it. In short, we can't think of, we can't work on line one, time to go to two. Main connective on two? It's an ampersand, obviously. Well, that's always great news because we immediately have something to do. Ampersand's the main connective, we're going to break it up. Put Z on one line, R arrow S on another line. Justification for both of these is just to cite the line number, which is 2, ampersand out. And we'll use the ditto marks. Did it twice. I'm going to check this one off because I've worked on its main connective. Line 3. This one has an arrow as its main connective. So, if I can find S and T on a line by itself, then I can write M. And I take a look. Do I find S and T? Well, notice I do find T and S. It is true that S and T is logically equivalent to T and S. However, we can't just take this equivalence for granted. It is not okay for me just to say 3, 4, ampersand, three, four arrow out and get M. Instead, when I notice that T and S is the same as S and T, I have to recognize that I'm doing a tiny bit of reasoning and I need to show that that I need to show that reasoning in my proof. So what I'm going to do is take line 4 and break it up and turn it into T and S. Of course that'll be 4 ampersand out done twice. And now that they're on separate lines, I can put them back together in the correct order. When I broke it up, Basically, T was P and S was Q. But now, I'm going to just sort of say to myself, well, I'm going to think of S as P, and I'm going to think of T as Q, and so it's okay for me to put them together in this order and get S ampersand T. There's nothing complicated about this. In fact, most people really just feel like it's obnoxious. And why do we need to do this silly thing? where we take the line apart and put it back together. Get those, get that mess out of the way. I always like to point out that the reason that we're doing this is because in logic we really do want to be really rigid about how we're working and we want to show every step of our thinking. So when we recognize that S and T is the same as T and S, we want to show that recognition in our proof. I oftentimes say, imagine that it's like you're trying to explain the proof to a computer, and computers are idiots. In fact, the computer you're trying to explain that to this to only understands three things, and that's these three rules. So anything that happens that isn't in, correspond, in exact correspondence to one of these rules, then the computer doesn't understand it. Okay, well, we did a, a creative rule. S ampersand T. We, we did ampersand in. I always say you should never do creative rules unless you know why you're doing it, but we know exactly why we did this. It is so that we could do the arrow out. And now I need my pencil to work again. Okay, and when I do the arrow out, I say S and T gives me M. I have S and T, so I get M. It will be 3, 9, arrow out. What could I check off at this point? Well, I just made use of line 3. 
You might notice when we broke up this TNS, I could have worked checked that off too because I worked on its connective. At this point, we can just continue working down and see if there's anything that we can do. Now, when I do that, Z is uninteresting. I get to 6. I say if I can find an R, I can write an S. Can't find an R. T and S, uninteresting. S and T. Well, notice I built S and T, so I don't need to be taking it back apart. M, uninteresting. So it doesn't look like there's anything to be done down here. Um, time to go back up to the top. I still don't have the conclusion built yet, and so it's time to go back up to the top and see if there's, and, and think about this line again. It says, if I have R, arrow, S, and T on another line by itself, then I can write W. Do I have R, arrow, S, and T? Well, notice that it's a combination of R, arrow, S, and T. And yes, there's the R, arrow, S right there. And there's the T right below it. And so what I can do on 11 is use ampersand in to write R arrow S ampersand T. The justification is 6 and 7 ampersand in. Line 1 inspired me to put together these two lines. Notice 1 didn't show up in the justification, but it inspired me to build this. And I know exactly why I built it. It's so that I could do the arrow out and get W. That, of course, would be 111 arrow out. At this point, you'll notice I've checked off everything that I was interesting up here. Our arrow S, I never worked on that, um, but it turns out I don't need ever to do arrow out on that. Its role in this proof was to be available to be half of this antecedent. But you've always got to have one eye on your conclusion. And when you look at the conclusion, you see that this first ampersand is the main connective. So if we're going to build this, we're going to have to have T on one line and W and M on another line. I take a look up above. Yeah, there's the T right there on line 7. I've used it once, but you never exhaust a line. It's always available to be used again. And then I said, well, I don't have the W and M together. Ah, but I do notice both of them right here. There's W, there's M. Would it be okay for me to take all three of these lines and put them together and just say, well, I'll call this 13, and I'll say 7, 10, 12, ampersand N? And the answer is no. Our ampersand N rule allows you to combine two things at once. Now, the truth is, if you go on to logic 2, they might well let you get away with, with something like that. You might put ampersand in times 2 or something like that. But we want to be very rigid and careful about everything. So what I have to do is first put together just two of these. And notice it's really important that I put together W and M first because they're in parentheses. I can't put together T and W first. It has to be W and M. So that would be 10, 12, ampersand in, and now that I have the W and M on 14, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to use 13, and I'm also going to use 7. That's the two halves of this line, so 7, comma 13, ampersand in, and success. We are done. All right, I hope it's all making sense, and good luck with the studying.